Welcome back to Final Fantasy V Pixel Remaster. My name is Tales Fire Raga, and in the last episode, we did a lot of stuff actually. We got some legendary weapons, we went to the bottom of the ocean, uh, we turned Odin into a statue, that was pretty cool. And in today's episode, I'm actually going to be taking everyone back to the Phantom Village, mostly because we need to actually get the Black Chocobo. So we can do what today's episode is actually based around, the Phoenix Tower. Because, I mean, I did say that I was going to be doing the Phoenix Tower in the next episode, and it's the next episode, so let's go do it. I probably could have just flown around the world and it was faster just to loop from the bottom, but eh, whatever. I'll take the trip, I'll take the scenic route. The Phoenix Tower is located in the desert up here, but in order to get it, you actually need the Black Chocobo, mainly because there's no places to park the airship around here. But there is a forest with which to park your bird. And parking your bird- oh. Well, here's an enemy that's trying to give us the bird. Oh, Maelstrom is not really what I wanted to see there, honestly. I would have liked to, to have not gotten hit by that. But thankfully, I've got Aqua Breath to destroy you! Yeah, look at that damage. 8,000, and it's still not dead. <laughs> this thing is actually an enemy that I believe you can encounter in Galif's world, and is one of the reasons why the, the Moogle from the Moogle Forest takes the route he does to avoid the sand. But we never got this encounter when we were there, which is weird, but he's here now. And he's doing a lot of damage. The wolf pack is, in fact, back, doing, causing mass destruction. But another aqua breath should finish you off. Although we consumed a lot of MP fighting you. Worth an okay chunk of AP as a result. Maybe not... Maybe not worth fighting, though. So, I'll stand outside the Phoenix Tower and... I don't have any normal tents. I'll just use the cottage, then. And then we'll work our way inside. The Phoenix Tower has a bit of a nasty gimmick. Flip a coin. Heads or tails. Heads you win, tails you win, but you have to fight an enemy. I believe there's a way to tell which door it's going to be, judging by like the design on the vines and stuff. There's also some enemies in here too, they're not particularly threatening at this point. Like, I guess if you're not prepared, they're probably a little bit threatening, but we've got a lot of powerful magic at this point and a lot of powerful melee fighting. We've got Excalibur, we've got Meteor, we've got Sildra. So these things shouldn't be too much of a threat. And even the enemies that are like the quote-unquote forced encounters probably aren't going to be too dangerous. Enemies are at least worth a decent chunk of experience though. So I believe if I click this right one, yeah, it's a forced encounter. But what the forced encounter is going to be is actually going to be different. There are four possible outcomes here. And the outcome we just got is unfortunately one of the trickier ones. Thankfully, Liquid Flame in this area is not immune to magic. You can actually hit it, you can smack it pretty hard. We'll get Meteor going. Uh, do I have the Wonder Wad equipped to you? No, I have the, uh, Air Knife. So, real quick, I'm actually going to equip the Magus Rod, not the, the Wonder Rod. Because I learned that this powers up all the elements except for water. Which, come to think of it, that makes water, like, the only one that actually doesn't have a, 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 the ability to power it up. Which basically just means Leviathan, because Aqua Breath is non-elemental. There we go, 50% increase in damage. 
Still not pumping out huge numbers, I might have to equip black magic here soon, but... Eh, doing alright for ourselves. 1500 on something that only costs 10 MP is still pretty good. Alright, uh... You know what, I'm gonna use a few potions to heal ourselves up. And I think it might be time to change jobs for Kryla real quick. Well, what's, what's the max level for Knight again? I think it's six, actually. Well, I'm gonna equip Mystic Knight here. I'll say this, that we can get a more powerful Spellblade. And I'll also give you a... You know what? Two-handed will be very nice. Problem is, though, this means that we can't actually equip Excalibur with a Mystic Knight, but... Eh, we'll be fine. I'll take that hit if it means being able to, like, quadruple elemental damage things. And besides, it's gonna work toward getting us the power of Spellblade on other things. In fact, let's grab Spellblade Flare here. And we're just gonna wait for our turn real quick. Oh, please do not kill a person. You can just kill yourself, okay. Sure. In the words of Real Big Fish, why don't you go fuck yourself? There we go. Another place. Let's equip Spellblade Blizzagger here. Get everyone sped up with Haste Ga again. And I think I can hit all four of the encounters here with off guard. Yeah, there we go. Defense decreased, you're gonna be easy pickings. Ooh, look at that blaze, isn't gonna be doing too much damage anymore. Alright, let's showcase the power of quad power. Look at that. What an incredible play from a small child. Um, hmm. Let's show up Vampire as well. Vampire is kind of an interesting one. It deals damage equal to half the difference between your current HP or your max HP and your current HP. And it heals you for that amount. Unless you're playing the Game Boy Advance version, in which case it is bugged and does the full damage instead, the full difference. Which makes it, um, hilariously powerful in the Game Boy Advance version. Uh, I'm gonna do this other fight as well, just so that we can... Ooh, the Kuza Beast. You're gonna be a bit of an annoying one, I can tell. Who's a beast? I'm surprised we didn't fight earlier on, but... Get that Spellblade Flare going. Use the power of Rick Flare. The Kuza Beast mainly attacks using strong physical attacks and the question mark skill. Now, the question marks, question mark, question mark is a powerful ability, especially on this guy because he has a lot more health. So because of that, you definitely want to make sure you can deal a lot of damage to him and kill him quickly, but he doesn't have much health as a result. Everyone keeps dying before I can show off Spellblade Flare, which is, is fun, but also a little annoying. Monsters! So on the fifth floor and uh, every five floors, basically, you'll encounter a magic pot. This is the first time magic pots show up in the series, and all you gotta do is give them an elixir, and they'll run off happy. They're cute little fellas, and they'll basically trade you elixirs for Phoenix Downs, but more than that, they're worth 100 AP. If you are planning to level up your jobs, you probably want to fight these guys. I believe there's four of them in this dungeon, and they're every t five floors or so. so. That was a pretty nice big chunk of... Oop. 
Mm, I don't want to get back attacked. Partha, nope. And it, you know what? Partha, no thank you. I want to get out of here as soon as possible. Ooh, I could have done kick because it ignores row bonuses. Oh well. Uh, well, nothing's gonna live long enough for me to use Spellblade Flare, but I might as well attempt to show it off. Cause who knows? Who knows? Maybe you'll, maybe you'll live. Maybe you'll be the woman who lived. If you're just gonna put people to sleep, then, bam, there we go. Spellblade Flare is nasty. It increases your attack power and also has the lovely little effect of ignoring the opponent's defense. So it's very powerful in that regard for ignoring opponent defense. It's very, very nice. However, it also is the costliest of the spell blades. You also might have noticed as well that we don't have like a spell blade uh, Spellblade Meteor, or Spellblade, you know, something else. We do, however, have Spellblade Holy, which allows you to deal holy damage. It's the only Spellblade that's based on a white magic and not like a black magic. And makes sense, it's elemental coverage. I assume that if you were to pair that move with say Excalibur, that would probably be pretty darn strong. Hit you with the meteors. God, my mouth is a little bit dry, actually. It's a little bit parched. Maybe I should have gotten a bottle of water before I started recording this. I should have had that foresight. But I did not. More encounters. Another Kuza Beast. Alright. Get haste gone, everyone. Let's get ourselves prepared. I'm gonna try to off guard you again. Yeah, there we go. And let, let's power up with Spellblade Holy. I'm gonna wait for you to take your turn. Mainly because I don't want to get slammed by question marks, if at all possible. Hit you with that. Although that's probably, yeah, that's enough to kill. Meteor very good. Meteor very expensive, but Meteor very good. Although it's not as expensive as it is in Final Fantasy IV. Which I think makes sense, because you kind of go through this game at... You kind of go through this game with a lower level than you do Final Fantasy IV. Like, Final Fantasy IV, it's very easy to get to the end game as, like, level 50-something, level 60 maybe even. And, hell, I was in, like, level 70-plus before I finished the, uh, the DS version of the game. This game, however, you generally don't have a huge level or anything like that. You kind of clear things in the mid-40s late 40s, early 50s, maybe. So believe it or not, like, us being at level at level 35, we're pretty close to the end game, honestly. The end game is not too far away. One of you contains, well, these people, I guess. I'm gonna hit you with my kicks. And Sildra should do the job. Should do a little bit of damage. Do the job in a good way and not in the in the wrestling way where you lose. Slash you, there we go. The uh the Lemur enemies actually kinda look a lot like what would eventually become Aerith in uh, Final Fantasy VII. Monsters! It's another magic pot! And you, good boy, deserve an elixir, because I like having AP. Yay, yippee! In return, I shall flee! And give you tons of ABP! Parts mastered HP plus 20%, so 
He's close to mastering a monk. Now you might be thinking an elixir for a phoenix down isn't necessarily worth it, but at least we're also getting a decent chunk of gill too. Uh, I'm going to use ether on my casters. And maybe I should have used one on Cryo because she's pretty low. She's feeling pretty down right now, like a disgraced cosmonaut, but... Whatever. We'll work with it. Meteors. Yep, that just kills all of them. God, and imagine the damage with Meteor if you were using one of the more powerful casters like Black Mage or Summoner, he says knowingly. That would be quite power- oop, there's the third possible enemy here, the Bandrakoerl. Uh, I'm just gonna equip Holy and see what happens. Alright. Now that blaster might not sound particularly threatening, because Bandrico World's kind of a small enemy. But actually, that blaster might have a chance of instant killing. Usually it paralyzes, but sometimes it'll just straight up kill someone. It's a random chance. I don't entirely know why, but... You don't want to get hit by it. If you can help it, it's pretty rough stuff. Uh, Eroga should do the work. There we go. Pretty decent chunk of damage there. Lena mastered equip rods. That means that Lena is done with Time Mage. And now has power, which I will give to some other class. Well, you know what? We've got other casters that need to be leveled up for you, so... How about White Mage? White Mage with Time Magic. So you're gonna be doing a little bit more damage with those Meteors. There's a fly buzzing around my head. I don't know why it's buzzing around my head. I showered today. I'm not Stinky Boy. But this fly thinks I am. Which, I don't like that. Ooh, three of you. Maybe even three of these. Alright. Well, the more enemies there are, the less effective that Meteor is going to be, but it's at least going to kill one of them. There we go. Eroga. Hopefully to deal with the rest. Oop, one still lives. Which, I don't like that. I need you to die. If you're looking like Aerith, then I need you to, to make like Aerith. And... Die at the end of disc one, I guess. <laughs> uh, let's do Vampire here. Get some of our health back. Unless you count as undead. I know as Lemur, you're... Kind of named after some sort of death god. I'm pretty sure they're also like the same thing is for the the lemur enemy in Final Fantasy three. Runs off that same logic where they're named after a sort of death god and stuff, which I never I. Oh my god, this fly! Need to land on the mic. Because you're probably going to make a buzzy sound into the mic. And it's probably going to sound like bzzz. And everyone's going to be like, What's this weird sound that appears like 20 minutes into your video? And I'm just like, What weird sound? Oh my god, it's that fly. It's that dang old flying arthropod. That prepubescent flying ace. Being like, Oh, ha <laughs> Oop. Oh, I used the elixir on the wrong person. Hang on. I meant to use the elixir on you, but at least Bart's is max MP now. Max MP for all those spells he's going to use. Alright, Lena mastered white magic level 6 and Ferris mastered call, which means she's done leveling up summoner. Which means we can start using summons on other jobs as well. 
So how about... We start working uh, more on Black Mage for you. And I'm gonna keep with Summon just... Yeah, that should work. An Assassin's Dagger? No thanks, I want the Magus Rod. Kaiser Knuckles? Wait, hang on, well, what's Bart's got on them? Oh, Bart's. Oh, you silly Billy. Hold, hold on. You haven't had your Kaiser Knuckles re-equipped this entire time. It's when I optimized everything. It optimized defense rather than the exclusive weapon, so... You've been doing only half of your damage potential. And you knew this the entire time, didn't you? There we go, those are the big hits we want. I was wondering why it seemed like he wasn't doing very much damage, but... Now we know. Start casting those Aga level spells. Hit it with the big fire. Decent chunk of damage, all things considered. Maybe not as powerful as Sildra, but Sildra has to worry or doesn't have to worry about scaling. If Iraga does. Oh, Banter Coral, okay. I was thinking we were gonna get, like, the fourth enemy that we haven't seen yet, but... Nope. Doesn't seem to be the case. Uh, I'm actually gonna save an elixir. And, oh gosh, I wish I had, like, Lance on you or something. How about I just... Cure Ferris. And in return, Ferris murders you with Flare. Boom. Not as much damage as I was thinking it was gonna be. You want me to be real, but you don't have much health, so... I forget how many remaining magic pots there are. I might just run a physical party at this point. Or I could... Right, I don't have item or uh, rod breaking on you. Because rods aren't something that a white mage uses. Ooh, but for Ferris, I can actually get some MP back using that. Maybe I should have made uh, Lena Black Mage instead. Because Ferris also has access to uh, the Lance. Got Lance as an ability for her. So I probably should have actually put Lena as a black mage, but oh well. I thought I had selected a Phoenix down on Bart's, but I guess it didn't like my inputs or something. Phoenix down on Bart's. Oh, I see how it messed up now. It don't matter. It ain't no thing. None of this matters. Heal everyone up just a tad, just a little chunklet of healing. Oh, I shouldn't have said chunklet. Parthenope's just like, that's not a word. Chunklet isn't a word. And I'm gonna stab you in the face. Because that isn't a word. Can't just make shit up. I'm just thinking that's where you're wrong, kiddo. Another bander coverall. Okay. Well, we can kill this thing pretty quickly. Okay, fly. Stay there. No, no, that was not summoning you. That was not me saying, oh, come over here, Mr. Mr. Buzzy Fly. God, title of this episode is just gonna be Tails Fyraga vs. The Fly. Who will win? A 30 30 year old man or a tiny insect? The answer may surprise you. 
It's probably the insect. It has incredibly fast reaction time. Alright, I believe this should be the last magic pot in the dungeon. So, let's give you an elixir. Yay, yippee! I'm gonna give you lots of points. You did it! You've earned lots of points! Crown Mastered Spellblade level 6 and Bart's Mastered HP plus 30%, which means both of those jobs are mastered now. So we're putting some pretty decent chunks into it. Uh, let's start working on... I have an idea on what we could try. Happens if we point it at a real fish eye. There we go. Yoichi's bow and... What abilities do I want for you? Got aim. I'll give you sing too, make you the singing bard. The singing ranger. Basically just what bard is in Final Fantasy XIV. And Kryle, I'm gonna put you back tonight. But now that you have the full power of Spellblade on Excalibur, you're gonna be doing a lot of damage there, little missy. Phoenix Tower. I am holding off on an elixir just just in case though. Alright. I'm going to take you. I'm going to take the moon. I'm going to take the sun. Or you take the moon and you take the moon. You take the moon and you took my son, for that you will pay in your cold blood. You know, as the intro to Chowder famously goes, I'm pretty sure they mention murder in cold blood in the intro to that song. Like, it's been a while since I've watched Chowder. I thought Chowder was a funny show. It was pretty good. Not my favorite, like, era of Cartoon Network in general, but I think Chowder's, like, sense of humor and the things it did with the medium were just absurd enough to make it really funny. I never really liked, uh... Oop, Soul Cannon. Oh, well, I never really liked the Soul Cannon. Ooh, you are dealing a lot of damage there. You know what? I'm actually going to use an elixir on Lena. Just so that I can uh, get some healing going on. Although you're taking a lot of damage from that Thundaga. As it turns out, having 50% damage to a buff on... Alright. Alright. I need you to don't. If you could kindly not. If you could kindly just die to these meteors. Aye, aye, aye. Alright, well, at least Len is starting to catch up level-wise now. Let's bring everyone back to life. Everyone died to the wave cannon. Everyone was doing the wave. I got distracted by Chowder and was going to talk about how, oh, I never really, I didn't like Flapjack as much as like a show from that era. Like it was all right. It just kind of didn't speak to me in the same way. Apparently the, the wave cannon was just like, hey, I took offense to that. You're gonna be talking shit about my favorite show. So I'm going to destroy you. That's the sound of the cannons. That's like the voice that cannons famously are famous for. <laughs> that famous thing I'm famous for. Alright, Barts. Bard Barts. No, don't turn me into a Zambi. Don't turn her into a Zambi. Oh my gosh, you're gonna make me use all my items here, aren't you? I forgot how annoying some of the enemies in this area can be. 
Because I was thinking, oh, the, you know, the forced encounter, the mid-boss enemies, they ain't so bad. And I'm right, they ain't so bad, but... They're kind of the least of my concerns right now. Don't put someone to sleep. I need people to be awake. How does your dance put someone to sleep anyway? Curious about that, it must be a real shitty dance. Watch me now, I shall do the Harlem's Shake, and when I am done, you will no longer be awake. I shall put you to sleepeth. Ooh, there is another floor here. 2500 gil. Alright. I have one elixir left. You're probably the last one, though? Hopefully? It was either four or five. I'm thinking it wasn't six, but it could have been six. Found an Eva's killer, nice. If we didn't already have something better, or already steal an Eva's killer bow, that would be really good. It's still a good bow to have. It's just, you know, not as strong as what we have now. Alright. Uh, let's see. I'll probably kill you with some meteors. I might be able to get some MP out of you. Ooh, you know what? I could probably do, like, Osmos Blade and start getting MP back for Kryl, because I think Osmos Blade is only one MP. That might be worth considering. Especially because I don't think any of the enemies here are undead. Soul Cannon, yet again! Ooh, okay, you're gonna do Missile this time. Yeah, let's do Osmos Blade. Let's smack you with Thunder. And imagine if elemental weaknesses were a thing in Final Fantasy XIV. I mean, I guess if you want to be pedantic, they kind of are, since... You know, there used to be the elemental materia, and you used to set your elemental resistances when you made a new character. But not really anymore. A lot of things have been phased out over the years with 14, which, to be fair, not every gameplay mechanic was, like, a big winner in that game. Like, there are some mechanics in that game that I'm just like, you know, I'm glad that this doesn't exist anymore, because this shit was obnoxious. Speaking of obno- ooh, you murdered yourself. I'm gonna moitalize the bum. Alright, speaking of Moitalize, there we go. I was prepared to cast Blizzara in case you lived, but as it turned out, you didn't. One more encounter and of course it's Soul Cannon. Alright, tell you what. I'm gonna steal some MP from you. Although... Osmos also has an accuracy check to- oh no, don't stop! Don't stop the baby! She's the baby! Gotta love me! I need her to actually be, you know, moving and grooving, juking and jiving so that she can get MP back, but... Well, apparently, apparently the soul cannon is just like, hey, I'm gonna stop your person. Wouldn't that be fun? Uh, can we get a spell in time before you wreck our shit? Big damage. Alright. Um, more big damage. We like to see big damage. Keep using missile. If you if you use wave cannon, I am boned. Put 
that should be the last enemy encounter here. And on top of the Phoenix Tower, hear you. Is this the Windrake that saved you? Here you flies. Flies off. Hear you. What are you doing? He says he wants to help you. Hear you. Hear you descends down and becomes reborn in front of a red background. That's a heart-rending sound, isn't it? Lena. Here you knew he didn't have much longer to live. That means, in the forest, when he saved me. Seems he came to this tower so he could use the last of his strength to help you. Here you. What do you mean mother's not going to make it? Dear, the doctor did his best. It seems that the only thing that can cure her is a Windrake's tongue. Lena, where are you going with that knife? Certainly you don't mean to. Stop! Sire, I'll go. Princess Lena, kill him, and you kill the last of the Windrakes. What's more, the Queen Mother always cared deeply for Hiryu. Will you still cut out his tongue? Princess, your father used to come here every day, just as conflicted as you are now. But perhaps you made the right decision. Mother. The Windrake Hiryu became a phoenix and entrusted his strength and soul to Lena. Received the summoned monster, Phoenix. Hiryu. Thank you. And with that, let's skedaddle our way out of here. Sadly, I don't have access to time magic right now, so I'm gonna need to swap to that real quick. Then we can just teleport out of here. Because I don't want to walk down all those 30 floors. So unfortunately, here you is no more. But we kind of got to trade for something better. Here you will remain with us, not as a Windrake, but as the Phoenix. Now the Phoenix is another summon magic we can use, and they're a pretty interesting one. Revives one KO'd party member up to full health, and triggers Flames of Rebirth, which attacks all enemies with fire. However, you might notice that MP cost. That's pretty prohibitively high. So you're not going to be using Phoenix willy-nilly, I don't think. But who knows? It might just save our bacon. That is gonna do it for today's episode. I did not know, realize that the Phoenix Tower was going to take us this long to actually go through, but... Eh, 30 floors of bullshittery, so... Probably should have had more elixirs and ethers with me, but... Oh well, whatever. 
We mastered quite a few jobs, and... Before I leave, I actually want to run something by everyone. Uh, not that I'm planning to get much of a response or anything like that. But I'm thinking that every time a job is mastered by someone, I'm thinking that maybe I should master that job on everyone. Just do it off screen, just because we now know what that job is capable of doing, so there's no real use in showing off the process with other classes. But that's something that I'll probably do off screen, and even then, like, I'm probably not going to do it on everything right now. I think for the most part right now, I'm. If I do that, I'm probably just going to master, like. I don't know, I'm probably going to master, like, Time Mage on everyone or something. But if that's something you think I should do, just to kind of speed things up now that we've seen, like, what a bunch of the jobs can do, uh, leave a comment, I guess. That would be pretty nice. Any engagement at all would be nice. I'm very lonely. But that's neither here nor there. In the next episode, we still have options. We can go to Istory Falls, or I can take down Bahamut at North Mountain. But I think I'm gonna go to the falls, because Bahamut is one tough customer. I'll see you guys later. This is Tales Fire Rock signing out. Thank you guys for watching. And if you liked the episode, how about click the button? You know, I heard that in some videos, if you say click the like button, that the like button suddenly glows. Maybe it'll work this time. I don't know. <laughs>